The conscience of children is formed by the influences that surround them, their notions of good and evil are the result of the moral atmosphere they breathe. Compassion alone stands apart from the continuous traffic between good and evil proceeding within us. When I sit down to write a novel, I am exploring my own relationship with God, with the struggle between good and evil, my own purpose. It is not true that good can only follow from good and evil only from evil, but that often the opposite is true. Those who forget good and evil and seek only to know the facts are more likely to achieve good than those who view the world through the distorting medium of their own desires. Everyone spends their lives trying to balance their world between good and evil. Good and evil do not exist for me anymore. The fear of evil is merely a mass projection here and on earth. There is nothing in nature wherein there is not good and evil, everything moveth and liveth in this double impulse, working or operation, be it what it will. The function of wisdom is to discriminate between good and evil. The whole course of human history may depend on a change of heart in one solitary and even humble individual, for it is in the solitary mind and soul of the individual that the battle between good and evil is, waged and ultimately won or lost. People desire to separate their worlds into polarities of dark and light, ugly and beautiful, good and evil, right and wrong, inside and outside. Polarities serve us in our learning and growth, but as souls we are all. The youth of an art is, like the youth of anything else, its most interesting period. When it has come to the knowledge of good and evil it is stronger, but we care less about it. If time is not real, then the dividing line between this world and eternity, between suffering and bliss, between good and evil, is also an illusion. This is a struggle of good and evil, and we're the good. Wisdom we know is the knowledge of good and evil, not the strength to choose between the two. The first idea the child must acquire is that of the difference between good and evil. One that confounds good and evil is an enemy to good. Behind the man is the tree of life, bearing twelve fruits, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is behind the woman, the serpent is twining round it. Each of us has a vision of good and of evil. We have to encourage people to move towards what they think is good. Everyone has his own idea of good and evil and must choose to follow the good and fight evil as he conceives them. That would be enough to make the world a better place. Christ shared our experience, he suffered as we suffer, he died as we shall die, and for forty days in the desert he underwent the struggle between good and evil. The line between good and evil is permeable and almost anyone can be induced to cross it when pressured by situational forces. In this life, we have to make many choices. Some are very important choices, some are not. Many of our choices are between good and evil. The choices we make, however, determine to a large extent our happiness or our unhappiness, because we have to live with the consequences of our choices. Within a culture possessed by the myth of feminine evil, the naming, describing, and theorizing about good and evil has constituted a maze-slash-haze of deception. The journey of women becoming is breaking through this maze, springing into free space, which is an amazing process. One should see the world, and see himself as a scale with an equal balance of good and evil. When he does one good deed the scale is tipped to the good, he and the world is saved. When he does one evil deed the scale is tipped to the bad, he and the world is destroyed. Art is built on the deepest themes of human meaning, good and evil, beauty and ugliness, life and death, love and hate. No other story has incarnated those themes more than the story of Jesus. If your religion doesn't teach you the difference between good and evil, your religion is worse than useless. Good and evil, right and wrong, those are two fundamental opposing concepts that define the nature of humankind. Life is neither good or evil, but only a place for good and evil. Wisdom is the knowledge of good and evil, not the strength to choose between the two. Words, so innocent and powerless as they are, as standing in a dictionary, how potent for good and evil they become in the hands of one who knows how to combine them. The only objects of practical reason are therefore those of good and evil, for by the former is meant an object necessarily desired according to a principle of reason, by the latter one necessarily shunned, also according to a principle of reason. If men were born free, they would, so long as they remained free, form no conception of good and evil. You can compromise between good, better, and best, and you can compromise between bad and worse and terrible, but you can't compromise between good and evil. And now people look at the other side as a completely different kind of animal and say, 
they are taking the country down the road to purgatory. It's complete intolerance. All human beings are commingled out of good and evil. I'm enormously interested to see where neuroscience can take us in understanding these complexities of the human brain and how it works. But I do think there may be limits in terms of what science can tell us about what does good and evil mean anyway, and what are those concepts about. Nature has no principles, she makes no distinction between good and evil. We're all caught up in circumstances, and we're all good and evil. When you're really hungry, for instance, you'll do anything to survive. I think the most evil thing, well, maybe that's too strong, but certainly a very evil thing is judgment, the sin of ignorance. People's character is their behavior, we're all capable of good and evil. I've learned a lot about good and evil. They are not always what they appear to be. What Twilight Zone did was show we all have a great capacity for good and evil. I am in politics because of the conflict between good and evil, and I believe that in the end good will triumph. To begin with myself, then, the utterances of men concerning me will differ widely, since in passing judgment almost everyone is influenced not so much by truth as by preference, and good and evil report alike know no bounds. Whatever is done for love always occurs beyond good and evil. I experience for the American officers and soldiers that friendship which arises from having shared with them for a length of time dangers, sufferings, and both good and evil fortune. The power of choosing good and evil is within the reach of all. If there is no God, the labels good and evil are merely opinions. They are substitutes for I like it and I don't like it. They are not objective realities. Conservatives divide the world in terms of good and evil while liberals do it in terms of the rich and poor. What bothers most critics of my work is the goofiness. One reviewer said I need to make up my mind if want to be funny or serious. My response is that I will make up my mind when God does, because life is a commingling of the sacred and the profane, good and evil. To try and separate them is fallacy. Willing or preferring is the same with respect to good and evil, that judging is with respect to truth or falsehood. World War II is the greatest drama in human history, the biggest war ever and a true battle of good and evil. I imagine writers will continue to get stories from it, and readers will continue to love them, for many more years. Visit our website for more quotes, quoting.com.